Field work and working with experts are critical to the success of an expedition. They provide a critical learning experience that you absolutely cannot get within a classroom or out of a textbook. Really nice job. Branching out is a seventh grade science expedition. The students had a chance to work with the city arborist, uh, contribute to a database on the trees in an urban community, and the final product involved was that every kid created a proposal, a tree proposal, for a neighborhood that was lacking greenery, and as a result, trees were planted in that community. So this is a map of all of the uh, quadrants that are broken down for us, for our tree. We think inventory. about field work and experts as soon as we start planning an expedition. They know 18 trees already, or species of trees, and that pretty much covers this whole... When we have all our ideas on the table, if we're coming up with a new expedition, we ask ourselves, what is the professional role in this situation? And can the students have the opportunity to take on the professional role if we don't feel that uh, we can create these opportunities for students, um, then that's an expedition that we're just not going to pursue. Here are trees, like this is a ginkgo, Dave, is that correct? Um, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jeff Tarlin, our city arborist. And One of the best uh, parts of this expedition was the expert involved, Jeff Tarlin. He's a city arborist. And up until this year, um, we knew we had seven or 8,000 records of trees. He came to our school with a genuine need to uh, complete the database of trees for an urban community uh, here in Portland. All the things in blue and all the, all the streets in red, we had no idea how many trees we have. And electronically, that... Another strong aspect of this expedition uh, were the tools that the students were able to use. The students had iPads equipped with an app, uh, Esri, which actually allowed students to put data points on aerial maps. Do you think there is utility? And then they could uh, put attributes to those points, the species of the trees, the condition of the tree, the maintenance needs of the tree, which was really helpful to the city arborist. This program was actually the same uh, program. They were doing the same exact work that the U.S. Forest Service was doing on the other side of the city. Can you raise your hand and tell me what color are water lines? Wow. We worked really hard to prepare our students for success. We incorporated numerous fieldwork experiences that uh, would prepare students uh, for the final work. We had students um, take part in a community survey on the benefits of urban trees. Thank you. Students had to go out and uh, accurately identify tree species and their distinguishing characteristics. We learned two different types of trees, a nori maple and a pin oak, and now we can identify... In order to operate the uh, Esri app on the iPads, we had to go out and perform a whole series of field work and training on how to uh, enter all that data correctly. And then the students took part in a tree inventory using the Esri uh, software on the iPads, which was directly linked to the city's GIS system. Position. It's good. It's fair. It needs trimming. Because look at all those dead branches. About 13 inches. Yeah. We're taking data on the trees. We're walking. Uh, we plan the routes that we are going to um, take measures on the tree. Okay, so try to find 293 Wait, or 286. The tree that we're looking at today is a Japanese pagoda. The Japanese pagoda is kind of like a honey locust, but the difference is it has bigger leaf roots. And flaky bark. Yep. So the ultimate field work experience for this expedition was when students went into this one particular neighborhood that was lacking trees. And they had to find locations where they could write their tree proposal. Six feet from hydrant, yes. six feet from driveway. Yes. Okay. Well, today we're doing field work, and we went out um, around this around neighborhoods in Portland to see where we would like, we'll kind of visualize and see where we'll actually like put trees. For large trees, we have yellow wood, green ash, English oak, maple, pin oak. So we kind of like had to like visualize and see what kind of tree we we're gonna put there. If it was to make shade, if it was to make the place look better. It could be a Japanese alcova because it's, it has, it has upright trunk. So they had to pull together everything they had learned about trees and how they grow and their size and their requirements um, before they could actually make a determination of what tree could benefit this particular location uh, for their proposal. Yeah, it isn't big enough, so I was thinking There's then no maybe a Turkish filbert or a Japanese nope. tree lilac.
When you do great work and you work with great okay, experts in the field, it provides a wonderful opportunity for an audience, uh, for students to show their final product. We had to go out to a certain spot. My spot is 76 Green Street. At our culminating event, we had the city arborist there. We had people from the city uh, and the community. Look at the rundown here, what you found for tree downer here. Different colors, or different types of trees all up in there. So and different types? Yeah, and then this is a tree size, like the, like the largest square. And the largest one we found was a pin oak. It was about pin oak? Every student was explaining their proposals in depth and detail. We had students explaining the applications on the iPads and how to document data. We had students explaining all the characteristics of trees and how to identify trees properly. We had students explaining the maps that were created from the inventory. In particular, the maintenance needs of the trees, which is a real benefit to uh, the people in the city. Getting students involved and, get, and having the community know more about the resource um, will help us better manage it in the future. At the heart of this expedition, I wanted students to walk away being stewards of this tree-filled community. You could teach whatever you want and however you want in a classroom, but until you get the students out doing real, meaningful field work, taking on real professional roles. You're not going to develop that relationship with your environment that you can act on. And that's why field work is so critical to an exploration.